All right. That was good, guys. Thanks so much for doing that. I told them they needed to sound good, and they did it. So I'm good. I'm about happy now. So that was great. That was great. Um, well, you know, the, the, the way that we kind of traditionally do things as far as being uh, the order we do the services in is we have Good Friday um, service, which is a lot more solemn. And this, this year we actually watch, um, after the Good Friday service, we actually watch the Passion of the Christ, which I, many of you have seen that, but man, you just, you watch something like that and you just, you can't, you can't shake it. Like, I could not shake it. It, 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 it just, it, it just burns the, the, the brutality of the cross into your head and just what Jesus did for each and every one of us. You know, Jesus came and he lived uh, a, an absolutely perfect life. He was 100% God, but he was also 100% man. And he came down and he, he fulfilled all the law's demands. Everything that, that was required, he did. And, and he lived a, a life without sin, the Bible says. He was innocent. He was innocent. But he said that he had the power to give up his life and to take it up also. He, he laid down his life for a reason. He gave up, uh, or he, he, he allowed himself to be tortured and killed and brutalized. He allowed that to happen. He was the creator of the world, is the creator of the world. He allowed that to happen for a very specific reason, and that reason is us. You think about that. He, he gave up the glories of heaven to come down and to be with us and to walk with us and to, to talk with us. And then he, he went to the cross to take our place and to, 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 to bear in his body our sin. The Bible says in Isaiah, which was written several hundred years before the crucifixion, the Bible says, by his stripes we are healed. Every one of those lashes that, that came down across his back as he was going to the cross was healing us. It was for us. And when you think about that, and, and just the heaviness of all that, it, 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 it's, it's so happy to get to Sunday. It's so great to get to Sunday and to be able to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. He didn't just stay dead. He didn't just die and stay there. He rose again. And now, because of that, what we do is we celebrate that, not just on the Easter Sunday, but every Sunday we celebrate the fact that Jesus is risen. And, you know, as, as much as we want to just, uh, just stand up and, and celebrate, we do, and we're going to, and we do that. It, it, it is it's amazing to me, and I think it's, it's worth talking about, that the, today, over in Sri Lanka, I don't know if you guys saw... The churches that are celebrating the fact that the resurrection happened and they're there to celebrate Easter were bombed today. There were eight separate bombs in, a, in some hotels and in the churches, and, and, and a lot of our brothers and sisters in Christ died this morning celebrating the, the truth and the beauty of the resurrection. You know what? It, it, that, that, and the crazy part is. That's, that's so sad, and we don't understand it. But because of the resurrection, we know where they're at. We know they're in the presence of their Savior today. And so I want us to do this, before we get full into this, and, and I want to just take a little bit of time as a church to collectively pray for our brothers and sisters over there that are suffering today, and, and, and specifically, because that, that tragedy's happened, and that, that, that violence has happened. So let's just take some time. I'm going to lead us. So let's just pray together for, for the ones that have suffered this morning at the hands of the terrorists. So, so let's, let's have a word of prayer together. Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come together to celebrate, Lord, I don't want to do anything to, to dampen that because there's nothing to dampen that. But God, I do ask that the ones that are that went to church this morning just wanting to celebrate this truth and, and so excited about about Easter and Resurrection Day. So excited about the fact that you are alive. And they were, their lives were taken. And they, some of them were injured. And, and God, all that happened. And so Lord, today, 
we collectively, here, here in Bend, Oregon, God, we just ask that you be with them, the ones that are hurting, the ones that have lost loved ones, the ones that, that, that may not know what's going on right now, God, we do ask that you would be with, with, with these dear folks, and, and God, um, heal where, where, where there needs healing, and, and, and heal uh, emotions where there needs emotional healing, and, and, and God, we just ask that your will would be done, and we give that all to you, and, and thank you for uh, listening to our prayers and hearing us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, as we celebrate today the, the, the resurrection of Jesus, and, and as we were, we, we were uh, weighted down with the truth of the cross, now we're lifted up with the, 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 the beauty of the resurrection, the fact that Jesus is alive and he's alive forevermore. Here's the story, uh, one of the stories is told in all four Gospels, but here's Luke's version. He says this, so after the, 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 the cross, he was pulled down from the cross, he was buried in a tomb. And, and he was prepared, his body was prepared for burial, but they had to rush it because they were coming up against the, 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 the Sabbath. And, and so um, they were wanting to go and, and, and finish the job and do uh, take some spices that they were prepared and go. And, and the Bible says they were wondering how they were going to roll the stone away. Because they had placed a big stone in front of the, the mouth of the cave uh, and they had sealed it because they were worried that the disciples would come and steal Jesus' body because they knew Jesus had said he would rise again, the Bible says. And so, as they're walking to the grave, they're saying amongst themselves, how are we going to roll the stone away? And, and it says this, on the first day of the week, which is Sunday, very early in the morning, which a lot of you know really well. Some of us are less familiar with that part of the day. Um, but very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away. It was already, it was already rolled. It was already out of the way. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. So you can imagine the confusion. They just saw Jesus die. These ladies that, that, that is mentioned were there. They were standing at the foot of the cross. They saw Jesus die. They, and when they went to, uh, the, the, the sky had grown dark and, 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 and all kinds of crazy stuff had happened. Jesus had said, it is finished. And, and he had given up the ghost and he had died. And, and they went to, to, to rush the um, uh, the death of the people being crucified because of darkness, and they they broke the other two guys who were with them. They broke their legs to because then you couldn't pull yourself up and you died a lot quicker that way. And they went to Jesus, and Jesus is already dead. And they said, make sure, and they, they shoved a spear in his side. The Bible says to make sure that he had died, and they they verified it. And those women had seen that happen. There was no doubt he had been beat with the cat of nine tails and been scourged and been, and been brutalized uh, the whole day. There was no doubt that Jesus was dead. And yet they come to a tomb and they look and there's no Jesus. He's not there. The, the, there's no body there. And so you can imagine the confusion. You, you, I mean, uh, that, that's not a normal circumstance. That wasn't a normal circumstance back then. You know, this was this, something unusual had happened. No more unusual than if we had come to a, a, a funeral home or go to a funeral and open the casket and the body wasn't there. That would be very confusing. And so they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. When they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wandering about, wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. Also an unusual circumstance. <laughs> This would ratchet things up at the funeral also, considerably. And if you open the casket, nobody was there, and you're wondering what's happening, you're trying to figure it out, and then you look, and there's two guys standing beside you in clothes that gleam like lightning. Now, I know my shirt is bright this morning, but I can't pull this off. These guys just showed up, and they're standing there trying to figure out what's going on, and all of a sudden there's two men standing beside them just shining like lightning, glowing, bright. 
illuminating. I don't know, whatever word you want to come up with. I, 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 that's all mine. I, I grew up in West Virginia. I have a fairly limited vocabulary. but So I, I kind of, yeah, that, that's as good as I get there. But they're standing there right beside them. And, and, and they're, as they're looking in the tomb trying to figure it out, they see these guys. And, and then this happens. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. I think that's probably a reasonable response considering the circumstances. They, they see these guys, and they, they know the body's gone, they don't know what else to do, they just fall down. They're, they're scared, as we all would be. As we all would be, if that were the case. So they fall down there to the ground, but here's what the men said. I love this. I love this so much. The men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here he has risen. Amen? That's it. That's it. And, and, and I love the first, the first sentence. Why do you look for the living among the dead? And we do that all the time, don't we? We look for things that are going to satisfy us, and things that are going to make us happy, and things that are going to bring some measure of contentment everywhere we can, but where there's life. Jesus Christ was dead, but He's alive forevermore. He died on the cross, but He rose again. And we say it kind of flippantly, we say it with this kind of cliche, kind of sound behind it, but you think about that for a second. Jesus Christ died. He was dead. You can't say that about too many people. Lazarus was dead. Remember Lazarus got rose? He got rose. <laughs> See, told you. Uh, that's, that's my house all the time. Uh, he was risen from the grave from Jesus. And I said, what are you? Yeah, you got the point. And he came out of the grave. But he died again. He died again. He was dead, but he's also dead again. Right? Jesus, that's not the case. He rose alive with the keys of death, hell, and the grave. The Bible says he, a few days later, he, he ascended to the Father where he is today, making intercession for us. He's alive forevermore. The only place we can find true life, and we can find the place where we truly live, is in the one who truly lives, and that is Jesus Christ. There is no other way. Isn't that amazing? And we know the story. And, and, and as they went, this was this was the the, the 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 apex moment here. He is not here. He has risen. And so then they say this. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. That's pretty plain, right? But but still, you, you can hear people say that all you want. And you can kind of hope it before you know that they actually die. Right? I mean, you can, you can hear somebody say that, but maybe. I don't know, maybe. And, and I'm sure they were kind of thinking, like, okay, Jesus. I mean, how, how can you, you have no frame of reference to even be able to quantify some kind of statement like this. But now Jesus has died, and they're distraught, and they, they, they don't know what to do. Their, their rabbi has died, and the hope and the dream is over, and all they want to do is take care of the body and make sure he's properly laid the rest. That's all they're thinking about now, because this young man, so full of life, so full of energy, so full of hope, was gone and taken away so seemingly tragically. And they're going to try to take care of the body, and he's gone. And they say, he's not here, he's risen. And then they say, remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered to the hands of sinners, be crucified on the third of be raised again? Then they remembered his words. That's right. And we know the story. He, they, 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 they can't believe it. They're doubting, they're not sure. And then Jesus shows up in a room with the doors shut, and he just shows up in the room. And, and there's a let, there, there's, I guess, ten of the disciples are there. Thomas isn't. And they, they go and they tell, they tell uh, Thomas that, that Jesus was there. And Thomas is like, nah, uh No, he wasn't. There's no way we saw him die. And you say, man, what? A, I can't believe Thomas did that. That's us. Well, that's me. 
I don't know about you. I can't speak for you. But I would have done the same thing. I saw him die. What he said. I know what he said, but I saw him die. That would have been painful. And Thomas comes, is with the, the, the rest of them. And all of a sudden, Jesus shows up. And, and oh yeah, Thomas had said, unless I see the nails in his hands, the nail prints in his hands, and, and the hole in his side, I won't believe it. And Jesus shows up. And guess what? Look. And Thomas said, I believe. And Jesus said, you believe because you saw this. But blessed are they who don't believe, who you don't see and still believe. And that's us. Amen? Because it's true. It's true. Jesus Christ came, he died, but he rose again. And I believe and we believe that he is alive forevermore. Amen? Amen. So what does that look like? Just think about this. Think about resurrection grace. And we think about everything that we do, everything that we do, every motivation that we have is because of the resurrection. It's because the resurrection is true. If we, if we didn't believe the resurrection was true, why would we do anything that we're doing? There are really good soccer games on right this second. Right this second, there's really good soccer games on. As we speak, I could be home right now watching a soccer game. And you guys know how exhilarating soccer is. Yeah? There's golf happening right now. I love watching golf. I just think it's, I, I, I love it. I think it's great. I can, there are, there's water out there. Have you seen the day? Get on a boat and get out there. If the resurrection isn't true, then let's start living a little differently. But we believe that the resurrection is true. That's why we gather. That's why we do life together. That's why we meet and teach and learn about what Jesus is doing. Because it's far more exciting than any of those other things because of the resurrection. And you think about all that we do for each other. Loving each other. Giving of ourselves, our time, finances, efforts. And everything else. And, and, and loving each other. And putting ourselves down so that we can live out for others. And, and all that comes with living with the Spirit and, and living out. Why would we do that if not for the resurrection? It makes no sense. But because the resurrection is true, it makes all the sense in the world. Because of this, Jesus rose again to life. He gives us life eternal as a result. You know what it means? That I have eternal life. I believe every bit of who I am that I have eternal life. That sounds, maybe that sounds kind of crazy to some of you. But I believe if you're a follower of Jesus, you have eternal life. You know what that means? That means I'm, I'm okay forever. I'm okay. I'm going to be in the presence of God forever. I believe that. And the Bible also says, I'm joint heirs with Christ. You know what that means? That's got some perks. That's, that's, that's the perks. You think about that? You think about that? Everything that Jesus has is ours. Think about that. That's what he says. We're joint heirs with Jesus. His Abba Father is our Abba Father. You think about all that comes with You know what that means for us living here? That means I don't have to do one thing to try to self-preserve. I don't have to do one thing to try to earn anything. I don't have to do one thing to burden on the, the, the lust and passions of me. Why? Because I'm already taken care of. Jesus freed us from the tyranny of trying to please an unpleasable God by taking care of all that for us and providing us eternal life. Jesus didn't save us because we earned it. He saved us in spite of the fact that we could do nothing to earn it. And now everything we do is motivated by the truth that we're taking care of forever because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen? Beautiful. And look what that, this is the, uh, just uh, several, a couple months later, this is the church in Acts. And this is what they were doing. All believers were one in heart and mind. You guys remember John 17? What was Jesus' high priestly prayer in John 17 that we talked about Friday night? What was the main crux of it? That we would be one. That we would be one. That we would be unified. 
And what's it say here in Acts chapter 4? Is they're full of the Holy Spirit. And they're, 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 they're fresh. And there's thousands of people being added to the church daily. Because of the Spirit working through His followers. And it says this. All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own. But they shared everything they had. You know why? Because they realized they had everything they needed in Christ. That's what it is. That's what that is. You know, when we, when we think about and God leads us in a certain direction and wants us to do something that, that may seem a little crazy, it's okay because we have all we need in Jesus. Everything I need is in Christ. And everything you need is in Christ. And they believe that. And therefore, no one claimed any of their own possessions was their own. They shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to what? The resurrection of the Lord Jesus. The motivation for everything that we do is the fact that Jesus is alive forever. We serve a risen Savior. And it says, And God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all that there were no needy persons among them. Every single person in there was taken care of. Because every single person in there realized that what we have is, it, 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 it doesn't matter because we have everything we need in Jesus. For from time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them brought the money from the cells and put it at the apostles' feet and it was distribute, distributed to anyone who had need. Everything that we do as Christ followers is motivated by the truth that Jesus is alive. And I want to proclaim today, and I want to declare that I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross I believe that with all my heart, and I believe He died for our sins. And I believe He was buried in a grave, and sealed in a grave. And I believe that on the third day, when they went to try to find Jesus, He was alive. I believe that Jesus Christ died, I believe He was buried, and I believe with all my heart that He rose again. Do you believe that with me? Yes. Everything that we do around here, everything that we do from that truth forward is because Jesus is alive. Amen. Heavenly Father God, thank you. Thank you for doing what you did for us. Thank you for going to the cross, dying to save us. Satisfying the penalty of sin on our behalf and raising up again with the keys of death, hell, and the grave so that we could have eternal life in And help us, God, as we move forward. God, that we will live life in a way that shows that we believe that you truly are alive forevermore and we will be alive with you Thank you, and thank you for letting us be in on the truth of your life. Thank you for letting us know this story. And thank you for giving us the privilege of passing it along to the next generation. And we'll give you the praise. In Jesus' name, amen.